<laughs> you tell her I'm gonna get her. <laughs> you you just tell her that. I'll tell her. Make sure you say to her I'm four dollars for you. <laughs> um, but um, so see me after church. <laughs> um, would any one of your guests, would you, any one of you guys, want to say have anything to say or want to say anything? Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for, um, you know, coming in to get here today with Edward and Sean. I'm going to say they brought y'all together, so trying to speak here about the church if y'all don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who rode with who, because I know y'all ride the second pop. Oh, no. <laughs> and if you brought it, you, you, you the title of the news. Oh, oh, he made sure he bought him. Oh, okay. He made sure he bought him.
They have not been put in the work. So pray that whoever we elect and we put in this time holds to their promises and beats it and puts in the work that we need to we, we put in these gun legislation legislation laws um the price of living like this is ridiculous mm -hmm. i was talking to my cousin yesterday and um the, in the grocery store <laughs> saying he was saying how they really don't care about paying seven dollars for a dozen of eggs no that's because they make it it's almost it's like five six dollars for a dozen oh. of eggs and, and supposedly you know it's a shortage on hands you know they come up with all kind of reasons as to why they uh raising these prices or whatever but so supposedly it's a shortage on like hens that lay eggs and this and this and this so y'all know they gonna probably jack the prices up even more mm -hmm. um but yeah they don't mind paying five six seven dollars that's because they making um six and seven you know <laughs> six and seven digit of numbers yearly coming in income wise but we're not and we're, we are the ones who are paying for it we're the ones who suffered and also while we paying five or six dollars for eggs four or five dollars for a gallon of milk we also paying taxes to pay them their salary that's right mm -hmm. that's right so please just pray that you know go out and vote if you have your rights your voter rights exercise them please go out and vote if you have some young people that are old enough to vote get them registered it is not too late you can early vote today tomorrow as well as november 4th so if you got somebody 18 and older that has not voted or has not registered take them to vote our people fought our people fought we were killed we were murdered for our rights so exercise them amen please continue i'm sorry i got off talking um, <laughs> please continue to pray for our church, its members, the members that you see here, the members that you don't see here, whatever that they're going through, please, you know, put it on their hearts, and, you know, their minds, their bodies, their souls, whatever trials and tribulations, that God blesses them, God heals them. Please continue to pray for Sister Tina Monroe, um, Brother Cliff Cooper. Please continue to pray for our city, our state, our country, and the rest of the world. With that being said, I'll hand you over to our pastor, Reverend Carl and Snowden C. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one oh. more time. I don't know, you look like people haven't woke up yet. All the joke tellers and the squires. I don't know what's going on. Everybody out of sync up. God was so good that you didn't want to tell nobody. That you, you, you just uh, want to keep it to yourself. You know, because he's great. He woke us up this morning. That alarm clock or that phone call didn't wake you up. God woke you up. Yes. And we need to appreciate it and just to thank you all for what he's done and what he's doing for us. We appreciate the visitors, first time visitors, right? Okay. Appreciate it and we hope you uh, don't make this your last time. That's right. Because uh, we've got the doors swinging open for you. Like I say, we always keep a light on for you. And see, they, they also holler about, I don't know, I don't like to say, but they even have got a smoking section outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody to holler about the smoking section. <laughs> <laughs> don't let that, because I'm on a huffing puff. It's outside. <laughs> God is good. God is good. All the time. And we just need to be able to smile and laugh and have fun in church and good eyes. God wants us to be joyful and have fun and do things. I guess He wants us to have fun because I look at some people who can't do nothing but have fun. God is something else. <laughs> It's good to be in the house of Lord one more time. And uh, I'm not going to say too much, but uh, I, I'm thinking that we we end this today. But uh, I don't know, maybe in December we'll have a family day. We 
was a family baby, family friend. He bring me family friends. And who it was? Bring the horse. And if it's a tie, we'll fix it up. It'd be worth your while. Family day. Ain't no first and second place, it's just whoever brings the most. And the time. So that, and anybody, well, I brought this, I did that, and uh, it's family day. So that means you and your wife together, not just you. Family <laughs> you and your wife together, not just you. Right. They represent the family. We call it family. So with that, I'm um, from pray by you for prayer. Oh, Father God, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts today, Father. We thank you for this new day in our lives, Father. A new beginning, a day we haven't seen before, Father. We ask you to bless and touch, and we ask you to, the prayer list that we have with the sick, the bereavement, the things going on with this world, Father, only you can make a difference. Only you can make a change, Father. And this morning when they talked about smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol, only you know why some people can get rid of it, some people can't. We don't know. We try to dig down and search, but you know the true answer why individuals do different things from others, Father. There's a lot of things that are hidden in our word and in our knowledge, Father. But we just thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for helping us through situation in prime time, Father. And we just ask you to bless those that are going through that. Bless those that in St. Louis and different places and different circumstances. Father, each and every one in this place today have an individual problem or situation that is their personal. And we want you to deal with an outlet for them, Father. Maybe a family member, finance, and money, whatever it may be, Father. And we just Pray and ask you to let the Holy Spirit come in and dwell and that we can enjoy the service, Father, that we can get something from you today, Father, that will help us through these problems and through these situations. Touch our hearts and our minds. Let us be able to reach out to others with love and concern and patience, Father. We ask you these things and all things. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we pray for the offer. Oh, Father God, we thank you for this offering we're about to receive. We pray that we use it for the lifting of uh, your kingdom, Father. We pray that as we search and look for another church, that you help us do this, Father. We pray that you add guests and friends and membership as you see fit, Father. You know we need different auxiliaries to function in church. We ask you to help us do this, help us do this growing processes. Help us to doing the things right. Help us to be able to love one another when we come in this door. And not just when we come in this door. Be concerned about each other as we leave here and pray for each other. We ask you these things and all things. In the Son of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're in the hands of the earth.
like a fool, I'll stay to my room. Can you think that sometimes you've been like a fool? Do you think that you feel like a fool listening to others telling you that God's not going to do nothing for you? Do you think you feel like a fool when people say, I don't know why you're going to that church? But are you feeling like a fool when you come to church and you can really get into God and Jesus and understand how good he is, Reason. how he will be there for you, how he will look out for you. And when the people in love community back to church reach out to each other out of love, please say, how long? I have I been away too long? Have I not did what God wanted me to do? Great. I heard a preacher say last night, sometimes people wonder why they don't get their prayers answered or things happen. Because are you doing what you want to do or what you doing what God wants? Are you putting something in to get something out? You can't go to the bank and draw no money out if you ain't got nothing in there. That's right. You can't expect to get answers to prayer when you ain't did nothing to get answers to prayer. You haven't talked to the Lord yet. Know the Lord, but you put everything before Him, but expect Him to do things for you. That's right. That's we need to stop and realize when we want to call on Him, He don't put us, us on hold. Yes. Twenty-four seven, three hundred sixty-five days a year, He's right there. Amen. He's never too busy. Yes. He never has something else. He need to do. Yes. Like a fool. Have hey, you been gone too long? Like a fool. Mm have -hmm. hey, you stopped realizing that he's the one who got you. Great. And if you don't put nothing in, don't expect to get nothing out. Yes. Like a fool. I've been gone too long. Yes. Anyway, we're going to stand here. Talk about the scriptures here today. And uh, if you would stand up for the reading of the word while you're doing that, I pray. Father God, we come today. Let us be able to see you in the message. Let us get something out of the message, Father. Let us be able to understand that you love us, that you do so many things for us that we don't stop and appreciate the blessing that we really get. Father, but we ask you to help us. Help us, Father. And let your spirit come in and touch each and every one here today, Father. Give them something to hold on to. And it's just say thank you, Father. We thank you for your son who gave us the opportunity to come to you, Father. I now I ask you to let me decrease, that you increase. Let Let's get something from heaven, a bread of heaven. Send your man of down to us in your word, Father. We're asking you these things and all things. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today our scripture is Job 38, 1 through 7. If uh, you don't have a Bible or anything, in the program, the responsive reading is out of scripture that we'll be talking about today. If you want to open up the program and follow along with uh, what I'm reading, you can. We read not a one different Bible, I'm reading one Bible, and she read, she got out another one. Okay. Verse 38 says, Job 38, 1 through 7 goes as does. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plan? Who words without knowledge. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth foundation? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Or 
or what were this footage set? Or uh, who laid it on the stone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shout for joy. If you would, I'd like to use a topic. World for you. Look at your name and say world for you. World for you. World for you. be simple. Kings has a song called Where Were You? The song says, My God answered me and said, Where were you? There when I spoke the sun into existence. Were you there when I spoke the moon in this place? Now, where were you? You know, sometimes that's something that if you got a significant other ask you sometimes when you're at home, when you're out missing and doing your thing. Where were you last night? Or where were you this morning? You know, people want to find out what's going on with you. Why you weren't there? What, 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 what you doing on me? Are you cheating on me? Are you lying to me? Where were you? Sometimes people are actually that. Sometimes you can get upset about it. Because you don't want to tell them where you was at. Because it might cause some problems. <laughs> then again, you might not want to tell them where you was at because you might have a surprise for them. So, where were you? Ask yourself, where were you when things went wrong? Where were you when things went right? Where were you? And, and in the day's lesson, we find it out. Job, everybody that knows some background of Job knows that uh, Job was going through some problems. Job family had been wiped out. Job had balls on his on his skin and things that he had to take potash to, to scrape it off. Job wife told him to cuss God out and die. His friends just literally said things about him that wasn't true. Where were you when they were talking about you? Where were you when they were lying about you? Where were you when they were pointing fingers at you? But then we turn around and look at some things and say, God, have you asked God, where were you? Have you sometimes asked God, where were you? When things are going wrong? When you're suffering, do you ask God, where are you? Where are you? Won't you hear? Why are you not doing things? Why are you not helping me? Where are you, God? Where are you? Sometimes at lonely time of the night, when you want somebody next to you or want to talk to somebody, where are you? Do you ask God, where are you? Then when things seem to be all wrong, do you ask God, where are you, God? Where are you, God? My world seems to be falling down. They're trying to put me out of my house. They done already took my car. I ain't got nothing to eat. God, where are you? I'm, 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 I just don't know what to do or how to go. Where are you, God? Have you ever been in that problem when you're asking God, where are you? Help me to, to believe in you. Help me to trust you. Help me to know you. Where are you, God? Then, then we talk about when family and friends turn back on you. We you. Ask God, where are you? See, Job found him, his friend. Everybody turned his back on him. His wife turned his back on him. He can't say his kids turned his back on him because they was all killed. But his friend, supposed to be permanent people in the community, came and talked about him 
put him down and said, you must have been doing something wrong. A lot of times things happen, you don't have to be doing nothing wrong. You might be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you don't have to be doing nothing wrong. Did you ever like, look at that woman in St. Louis, she got killed trying to help students. Look at the 15 year old, they was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but they was in the right place, they was at school, not in their own business. Hey, you sit on your porch sometime, and people come out and want to cuss you out and say some things to you because you was at home, not in your own business. But where were you when things happened? Where were you? Who you had to talk to, uh, call on when God seemed like he had left you alone? Where were you? When things just went from, where were you from? Then, then we look at when you think you can't go anymore. Uh, in life, you do not ask God, where are you? Where are you, God? When, when you just try to commit suicide, when you just try to raise your kids right or do some things right. And you, you don't understand everything going wrong. I'm suffering. I'm doing the best I can. I don't have this. I don't have that. God, where are you? See, Job didn't have the teaching that we have if we come to the church today. Job didn't know, but Job said, so will you slay me, so I leave. I, regardless of what you do to me, I'm going to trust in you. How many people have turned their back on God because things have happened? How many people have said, I don't believe there's a God that let me do these things? Uh, let me, things happen to me. How many people just try to stay in and, and believe and trust in me? How many people get away from me? You, you, you think you know everything. You think you're a Christian. You think you're better than me. God don't have no favor. He treats us all the same if we let him. If we get a relationship with him. If we get to know him. If we believe in him. If we walk like he would want us to walk. Where are you, God? Where are you? You know, then, then we look at God said, what did you say say to you? What did God say to you when you asked him, where were you, God? What did he say to you? Did God tell you, I'm right here. I've been here all the time. I, I haven't been missing. But you're the one missing in action. Sometimes you want to do your thing. You want to get out and sin. You want me to be a part of that. God, God, God is your loving and your friend and all, but he ain't gonna take no mess. He ain't gonna be there when you see him. When you see him, when your friend in a fight or something, take off running and rob it out of the God just sit back and let you go. He ain't your friend when you see him because he hates seeing you. He can't Walk you down the aisle when you're sinning and you're doing wrong. All they can do is sit back and wait for you to come to him and ask him for forgiveness. Ask him for a change of heart, a change of mind, a direction to walk in. Where are you? Did, did, did God tell you he was testing you? See, if you look at the book of Job, what it was, it was a test. God was taking Job to a test to show Satan that he knew what God was, what Job was doing. He, he had this. He told Satan, touch anything but his soul. And he's going to come through. Can God tell Satan to, to tell y'all, touch anything but their soul? How you build a relationship 
that God knows that you're going to be there despite of that God knows that he can trust you that regardless of what's going on that you say I'm going to put God first and let other things go but God will give you time to have joy he give you time for fun he give you time but when he wants you to do something when he wants you to invest in him you need to learn how to invest in him. You need to learn how to take time. You need to learn how to pray. You need to learn how to fast. You need to learn how to talk to him and tell him what's on your mind, what you're going through. God is there for you. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago that you can have the opportunity to talk to him for yourself. That if everybody and anybody in here can go to God for yourself. We can go collectively or by yourself. You can stand on your own pot because when you die, you go, you're going to go on either hell or heaven. You're going by yourself. It ain't no gang banging. It ain't no family thing. You're going by yourself. You need to know him for yourself. You need to talk with him for yourself. You need to let him show you and open your mind to what he wants you to do. How he wants you to do. Then when did God tell you, don't worry, I got this. When you're having problems, situations going through things, or things got you down, or things are wrong, or you need to do to make some changes. And what did he tell you? Don't worry, I got this. He said, come on to me, all you are heavy laden and heavy burden. I got you. If you're, you're too heavy for him, come to me. Don't worry. I got you. Where were you when he said, I laid the earth down? Where were you when you look at the earth and, and, and figure out, why do earth have not tilted this way or went this way? But the earth just circling away. There's no ropes. There's no Strange, there's nothing holding it up. But where were you when God, God sent it out to, to do that? Do you know God is for you? God is not against you. God loves you. God will heal you. God will direct you. But God got time for you. God said he got three scores and ten for you. You got 70 years that you guarantee to live if you live the righteous life, if you eat the righteous thing, if you talk the righteous way. You're supposed to be at least three scores and two. That's 70 years old. And after 70 years old, you're truly living on blessing because you live the path for him and guarantee you don't live. And those of us that over 70, our 70, we've been blessed. We've been truly blessed because we live in a path what God has already put in the Bible that we're going through. There's people that are going through things and things that are happening in their life that we can't understand and we don't know. And the Bible says, it ain't everything that God does or will do, he can't put it in the Bible. It ain't a book. Even the earth can't even hold what all he does for us and will do for us and have done for us. Do you have trust in it? Do you believe in it? And close it. Do you know God is holding you together? Do you really know God is holding you together? God got your back. God got your table. God got your house. God got your clothes. There's nothing that you have that God don't own. But we don't realize that. We take too much for granted who God is and how we truly been answered and how we truly been delivered if we trust him, if we get to know him, if we know God is the head of our life and nothing come before him. 
He can put pain, aches and pains can be joy because at least if you got aching pain, you know you're living. Amen. You know you got another chance to get away from the aches and pain. Do we realize how God is? Where were you, God? He said, I ain't nowhere but here. Wait no. I got you. The doors of the church are open. <laughs> Where were you when it's time to leave here? Are you going to hell or hell? Do you know? Have you called them? Have you answered them? Have you asked him to deliver you? Have you asked him to, to, to save you? Have you asked him to show you the right direction? There's two ways that you can come. You can come by the Christian experience, candidate for baptism. How about that? Do you know God? Do you know where he at? Do you know that you call on him anytime, 24 7? Do you know God not going to hang up on you? Do you know the son came here out of love to, to show you what he can do and will do? Do God is blessing you? Have you fallen short of your blessing? God's not a puppet. You're the puppet because he's the power. You're the clay. He made you. You didn't make you. We try to figure out God, but we need to figure ourselves out through God. But He can tell us how to do it and what to do. The doors of the church are open. Come while the blood is running. Come and thank you. Have you been sick? Have you been down? Have you been without? God will tell faith that God said, I got you. Here it is, I got you. And you went through things and realized God brought you through the storm. See, he brought Job through the storm because Job got a double portion of what he had before he went through the storm. Do you know how to trust in him? Do you know how to really believe him? When you get down and you want somebody to pray for you, when you get down and you talk about, could you pray for me? Could you help me? I got problems. Have you put any in investment in God? Or do you believe you can work it out yourself? You got to learn to depend on God. He's there for you. He's there. The doors of the church are open. Stop and think about what you have done for us or doing for us and 
how you're taking care of the Father. We ask you these things and all things. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.